Welcome back to the Just Grilling Outdoor Living channel. I'm Sam. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the EPX6 Stealth Edition Weber Smoke Fire Pellet Grill. The Smoke Fire is Weber's pellet grill. The EPX6 Stealth Edition is Weber's tricked out model in the lineup. It's an all black grill with a few feature upgrades that do not come with the regular Smoke Fire models. Let's go ahead and talk expectations for this video. Other than the feature differences that I plan to point out with this specific model, most of the information I'm gonna cover in this video can be applied to the regular Smoke Fire grills. I don't plan to go into a whole lot of detail about the EPX6 feature differences. And you might be thinking, you know, Sam, why is that? This is a video on the EPX6 after all. Well, the feature differences are pretty straightforward. I wanna spend more time talking about using the grill and the performance of it, which I think you're gonna appreciate more. I always do my best to cover as much as possible, but if I do miss something, just hold your question and leave it in the comments and I'll be sure to get to it. The Smoke Fire is a pellet grill. Pellet grills use pellets as fuel. And what is a pellet? A pellet's compressed wood that's available in a variety of fuel types to give your food better flavor. Now, all pellets aren't created equal, but that's a conversation for another video. Pellet grills require a power source to fuel the electronic system in the grill that feeds the pellets to the burn pot. You load the fuel in the hopper of the grill, you make sure the grill's plugged in, and turn it on. Then either using the onboard control, or if the grill has an app, you can set the grill temperature, and it takes care of the rest pretty much throughout the entire cook. This is why pellet grills are very popular. Pellet grills are still a very new concept to a lot of people, so I just wanted to briefly cover that. And not all pellet grills can be called pellet grills. Some are pellet smokers. What makes the smoke fire a pellet grill is the fact you can cook between 200 and 600 degrees Fahrenheit with this grill. It's a do-it-all grill. You wanna smoke a brisket? You can do that. You wanna sear a steak? You can do that too. The setup on the inside of the Weber Smoke Fire is different than what you'll find on most pellet grills. Most pellet grills are gonna use a long solid heat diffuser plate when smoking at low temperatures, but those plates aren't always designed to be used at higher grilling temperatures. The Smoke Fire uses two smaller heat diffusers that are directly over the burn pot, but they don't extend across the entire surface of the grill. Weber does this so you're ready to slow smoke or grill at any point in time with minimal setup. Weber also uses their patented flavorizer bars in this grill to help distribute heat more evenly across the cook surface and add flavor when the drippings drop down and vaporize into smoky flavor. The smoke fire burn pot is grated and drops the ash from the pellets directly below into the front facing pull out grease and ash tray. The cook box is sloped downwards on both sides with small openings on each side of the burn pot for grease and other liquids to drain into. Just like on Weber's gas grills, they make it very easy to maintain and clean. And sticking with the easy theme, let's now move on to the controller and Weber Connect app. It's becoming almost standard for pellet grills these days to be Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled. Controlling and monitoring your grill is a big selling point, and it's just nice to be able to do this. Even if you're old school on technology, the Smoke Fire uses the Weber Connect Smart Grill technology to run the grill. This means you don't have to be right next to your grill to monitor the temperature or adjust the temperature. You can do this from your phone or tablet on the opposite side of the house if you wanted to. If you're curious, how does the grill know how to run at a set temperature? It's through the ambient probe inside the grill. The Smoke Fire ambient probe is located in the rear center of the grill. This probe collects air temperature data that tells the grill precisely how fast to spin the motor to feed pellets to the grill to keep the temperature at your set point. Now I do want to point out pellet grills have fluctuations in temperature. If you were reading a data chart, you're looking mainly to see how the temperature averages out over a longer time span versus a short period of time. I can't stress how important it is to understand that there are gonna be heat fluctuations from time to time in any pellet grill, not just this one. The Weber Connect app is very user-friendly. 
After getting it connected to your home network or mobile device, it's very easy to change the temperature of the grill right from the home page of the app. Weber also has dozens of preloaded recipes that when used with the included food probes will tell you when it's time to flip your food over or pull it off the grill. I think that's very useful for a lot of people and it's a very underrated feature. Things you can't do with the grill at this time and in the app is view historical cooking data or temperature graphs of current cooks and depending on how advanced you want to get, the app and features are more simplistic than other grills out there. But again, this grill is designed for people getting into pellet grills, so Weber is keeping it simple. Updates for the controller can be sent via firmware that are easily updated through the app. This will allow you to do performance tweaks, use new app features, and so on, so that can improve your performance and experience with this grill over time. So now let's talk what makes the EPX6 different from the other Smokefire models. The first thing that stands out is the all black appearance. There's no chrome or stainless on the outside of the grill. I was kind of skeptical how this was gonna look in person, but it is very sharp looking. I don't think the photos online make it look nearly as nice as it really does in person, so I recommend getting to a store to check this out. The cook box and exterior lid are made with Weber's famous enamel, which is scratch resistant, very durable, and easy to clean. This is what you see on kettles and gas grill lids with other Weber grills. Weber upgraded the wheels on this model. Not only are they black, but they're a different style caster wheel. I really do like these compared to the regular wheels. If you're gonna be rolling your grill a bunch, these wheels seem to roll much smoother and they feel a bit sturdier. Now let's move inside the grill. Weber has the front heat shield that you won't find on other smoke fire models. This helps deflect heat back into the cook area. Having cooked with a smoke fire for a few years now, I do like this because this grill drafts pretty hot up front, so I like the idea of being able to redirect it away and back into the grill. Two features I really love is the addition of the interior cook box light and the Weber crafted frame kit. I cook in an area that isn't very well lit, so this is great to have a light, and this is what it looks like at night. The crafted frame kit lets you add crafted accessories as you can do even more with this grill. You can use a flat top griddle, wok, veggie basket. It just makes this grill that much more versatile. We have another video of the crafted system on our channel. So after this one, make sure you go ahead and check that out. Those are the feature differences the premium model comes with and the regular smoke fires do not. This model isn't dubbed as Weber's third generation smoke fire, but they've made enough minor enhancements that I feel like it is Weber's third generation. Weber tweaked the rear hopper by relocating the low fuel sensor to a better position. They also moved the safety grate up to the top of the hopper and increased the pitch slide on the hopper. These are all performance improvements for better pellet feeding and fueling. Another nice feature is the pellet dump on the hopper. This lets you change out your pellets easily or just remove old pellets that you don't want to risk ruining by running through the grill. Weber also made some tweaks to the igniter housing for more reliability. We're just gonna run some simple heat tests and use a separate digital thermometer to check against the grill reading. We're gonna run the grill at a low of 225, medium temperature of 400 degrees, and a high of 600. Now again, keep in mind, there will be fluctuations in the temperature reading. Also, pellet grills use a single ambient probe source to determine temperatures. So the location of that probe does have some correlation to the reading left to right across the grates. And the type of probe matters too. Most ambient probes are marketed as plus or minus 15 degrees for accuracy. Phase one of three of the performance test we're at 225 degrees. Don't forget, you need your safety gloves. We've got our external digital thermometer already set up on the inside with the ambient probe. And now what we're gonna do is move it to the middle and see what we're doing right above the fire pot. We're roughly running about 255 degrees, which is only a five degree difference from the left side. So now we're gonna move this probe over to the right side. And then we'll know our entire left to right ambient temperature. 
Our last reading at 225 degrees with the probe right over here on the right side of the grill, we're averaging about 237. So that is a little bit of a drop off from the 260 and the 255 we saw. So if you take those three numbers at our set temperature of 225, I'd say about 245, maybe to 248. It's probably what you're averaging left to right across the entire cook surface at 225 degrees. So now we're gonna go ahead and jack the grill up to 400 and test it at medium heat. We bumped the grill up to 400. We've got the ambient probe starting out again on the left side. We're averaging about 385 degrees, which puts us in that 10 to 15 plus or minus window. So it's looking really good. And now we're gonna move it over to the middle and see what we're reading there. Still at 400 degrees with the probe dead in the center. We're averaging about 418 degrees. So we do have a little bit of a disparity from the left to the center there. So we've got one more place to test, which is the right side of the grill. And for our last ambient probe position, we're averaging about 415, 416 degrees. So when you take all three readings and you average them out, you're roughly looking just a little bit over 400 degrees and that's what we have the grill set at right now. So we're looking really good on this test at medium heat. We're gonna do one more, crank it up to 600 and do this again. We're on high heat, 600 degrees. Again, starting all the way on the left, we've got the ambient probe there. We're reading 600 degrees, grill set to 600. That's what you want. Now let's move the probe over to the center. With our probe in the dead center, we are running a little bit hotter here, about 640 degrees. So it's 40 degrees difference between the left to the center. We've got one more probe placement. We're gonna check out the right side and then we're gonna break this all down. Our last probe position is averaging about 640 degrees. So if you take our left to right, we had 600, about 640, and 640 again. So about 620, averaging the three out. And that's great performance at high heat. Overall, between all three phases of this, I think we got great performance. And the reason that we do this test using an ambient probe on an external digital thermometer versus the grill is because of that fixed ambient probe. That is doing everything from one location inside the grill, so this gives us a better understanding. If there were more probes throughout the grill, you wouldn't see as much of a difference between what we have on the external and what's on the screen here. If you don't have an external digital thermometer to do a test like this, you can always do the bread test. The bread test, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna heat the grill on high, lower it to medium high, and then line the bottom cooking grate with white bread. After one minute, I'm gonna flip the bread, and based on how burnt the bread is, you'll learn the grill's hot and cold spots. For the most part, it's pretty consistent across the board. The center, which is where the burn pot is, you can see got the most burnt bread. Now let's talk actual cooking with the grill. This is something I've done with Smokefire grills since they were released, and it's something I've really enjoyed. This grill has done a great job with anything I've put it to the test. I mentioned briskets earlier, they come out great on here. I use the smoke boost feature on the front end for extra smoke flavor. Let's talk simple weeknight staples. This grill does grilled chicken very well and much more flavorful than it is on the gas grill. I cook fillets on here all the time. It's very easy to get a nice kiss of smoke flavor that elevates a simple weeknight dish. And now let's talk about the grill's performance with the Weber Crafted Accessories. I absolutely love the flat top grill. This accessory is great for burgers, among other things. I think this is a must have accessory and love being able to use it in this grill for this exact reason. The veggie baskets, also very easy to use and helps me prepare enough veggies for eight individual servings, no problem. Overall, I think this is a very well performing pellet grill for the price category it falls into. I understand the jury is still out for some people based on the reputation of the initial release of the Smokefire Grill a few years ago, but I do find that very unfounded and have had a great experience with this grill the majority of the times I've used it. Weber even offers a 100-day money-back guarantee from the date of purchase on this grill. If you buy it, 
and you don't like it within that time frame, call Weber directly and they'll refund you your money. There is a learning curve to using a pellet grill and that's really for another video. But a few tips for success with this pellet grill include keeping pellets stored in a dry place at all times. Moisture is the enemy for pellets. Use catch trays for slow smoke foods like briskets and pork butts. This makes cleanup easier. And lastly, understand your grill and how it performs. If you do all of that, you're gonna have a great time using this pellet grill. Now pellets are sold typically in 20 pound bags and the rule of thumb is they'll burn about one pound per hour. This can vary based on a variety of factors and is not something I'm gonna test or show in this video. With the feature upgrades on the EPX-6 versus the regular smoke fires, I do like this model more, but any of the smoke fires would be great. If I didn't answer a question or address a specific topic, just leave a comment below. I'll be sure to answer it for you. If you're in the Tampa, Florida area, come see us in our designer showroom to learn more about the grill and other Weber products. If you like this video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you get notified about more videos like this. It helps us out a ton and is a good way to show your support for us. You can also purchase a super like, which helps us continue to make great videos like this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.